Hi there. If you're watching from social media, we're just about to begin. Um, give us just two minutes to get going. But hello, social media world. Oh, my gosh. All right. Let us get started. All right, everybody's joining on in. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to wait just a couple minutes before we officially begin just to let everybody join on in. Um, and we'll get started here. I think that's looking pretty, pretty good. Hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Charles Kelly, and I'm the social media manager here at SketchUp. I am extremely excited to start off this webinar by introducing our hosts, as well as our agenda for this webinar. If you can, if you wouldn't mind, please let us know in the chat where you're watching this webinar from. Uh, we're hosting this webinar through Zoom, but we're also streaming this to Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. So wherever you happen to be watching this webinar, we're so happy to have you. So let us know. Uh, we've got people from Stockholm, Sweden, California. We've got Connecticut from Jordan, Nepal. We've got so many people across the world, and we are so excited to have you. London, Puerto Rico, more London. A lot of London, Brazil, Vermont, Westminster. Um, I'm also in Colorado, so this is exciting. Um, but uh, yeah, I am so excited to have each of you here today. So without further ado, let's introduce our hosts. Next slide, please. First up, I'm excited to introduce uh, Tova Lindblad. Tova is our higher education program manager here at SketchUp. Uh, she has decades of experience in the construction and design industries and uh, as an engineer, as well as decades of experience being an amazing advocate for sustainable building practices. Today, she guides AEC students on a sustainable journey through their careers. All right, next slide, please. Next up, we have Hari Natarajan, uh, the customer success team manager here at SketchUp. Hari is a certified energy manager with a master's degree in high performance buildings from the Georgia Institute of Technology. He has conducted ASHRAE level three energy audits and retro commissioning studies on dozens of buildings in New York City. At Trimble, uh, he has helped architects and MEP engineers optimize hundreds of buildings for ener energy efficiency and integrate energy efficiency into their design structure. Um, I would love your help in wel welcoming both of our hosts. Either send an emoji or a nice message in the chat. Just say hello to our hosts. All right. So what are we going to discuss today? Uh, we are going to discuss why considering sustainability is such an important aspect of design. We're going to touch on how SketchUp contributes to global sustainability. We'll go over a couple of professional projects to hopefully inspire you in your design process. We're going to introduce design tools uh, for sustainability and how you can use them. Um, we will show you a few examples of the incredible things students are already creating. And at the end, we have time set aside to answer any questions that you may have. Um, since we're pulling questions from multiple platforms, Zoom, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, we may not be able to get to everyone's questions before the end of this webinar. If you have any further questions after this webinar, feel free to reach out over uh, DMs on social media, and my team will do our best to get an answer for you. Um, our goal for today's presentation is to get you inspired. To next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, SketchUp is dedicated to sustainability as well as support, uh, supporting students and educators, and we hope that this presentation will give you the tools and inspiration to feel more confident in your designs. All right. You've heard me talk enough. Let's get this presentation started. I'm going to now pass the mic to Hari. Hari, welcome. 
Thanks, Charles. Uh, I'm super excited to be here and talk about this stuff because it gets me out of bed in the morning. Uh, sustainability, what is it, right? Uh, so the US EPA defines it as, as follows. To pursue sustainability is to create and maintain the conditions under which humans and nature can exist in productive harmony to support present and future generations. What they mean is, uh, at its essence, sustainability is our ability to consume without hindering future generations' ability to consume. That's pretty much what it is, right? Uh, and why is this important? Why are we talking about it right now? Because things are happening around us. Uh, the world is getting hotter. Uh, if you guys look at the, the graph, you'll see that the red is trending dangerously. We've gotten hotter by about two Fahrenheit in total since 1880. 2022 was the sixth warmest year on record since 1880 again. And the 10 warmest years have happened since 2010. So in the last 13 years, 10 of them were the hottest years on record. So this is serious, right? And this cannot continue because it will cause mass uh, discomfort at minimum, right? It will cause, it'll cause all kinds of bad things to happen. So why is this happening? Well, we are causing a huge chunk of it, human activity, right? The blue arrow you see there is what would have happened if we weren't here at all, right? Or if we had just not done anything new, but you'll notice that human activity actually has been heating up the planet faster than we expected. So the bad thing is we are doing it. The good thing is that because we are doing it, we can also solve it. Uh, and how, right? So Living personally in the buildings and construction ecosystem, uh, the construction ecosystem, everything from design to the final building and operations accounts for 25% of global greenhouse gas emissions, right? This is the stuff that heats up the world. And so since we are responsible for such a big chunk of this, this is where we can actually fix a big chunk of it too. Uh, so, which parts of this are important, right? Is it, is it, are we emitting more in the construction phase or the design phase? It turns out that most of this, these emissions occur during the operations phase of a building. So once you build it and it starts running, that's when over its lifetime, it, it consumes a lot of energy and also generates a lot of emissions. So the best way to reduce emissions is to design a building to be efficient in that operations phase. So design is super important in ensuring a building that consumes the least energy as well as generates the least emissions. Um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Tuva who will reinforce that message. Thank you, Harry. Construction's carbon dioxide impact will be reviewed more and more, and that has probably not escaped anyone that is listening today. And it was also be required to deliver climate declarations for buildings to minimize the project's environmental impact. There are already legal requirements regarding this in several parts of the world, for example, based in Finland and in Sweden, and it's spreading globally. There are analyses that indicate that the efficiency in the use of a material is as much as 50%. And that is a very high number and we cannot afford to waste any more material. We must optimize. And to achieve carbon savings, architects must make carbon reduction in their designs. And this must happen in early, in, in the early construction process in the, during the conceptual design. So an early action has the greatest effect that uh, that's when you as an architect actually have the chance to make a big difference. So the future is yours to build. It's, a, it's actually a very bold statement, but it is. And these three bullets are important. The industry requires sustainability. It's not an optional, uh, op optional approach any longer for architects to not do a sustainable building. And sustainable buildings are the future. And this is where your journey actually begins. 
Next, we're going to see who, uh, who are using SketchUp. It's for architecture, it's engineering, it's for construction, it's for interior designer, it's from game set designers. And here are some examples of careers, jobs actually, that do sustainable design. So you could actually work with sustainable design consultant, you can be a building energy analyst, you can be an architect, interior designer, designer, landscaper. You can work with sustainability as ESG, the environmental, social and governance manager, and you can be a building performance simulation expert. And there is so many more jobs. Uh, on the next slide, we have this great example. It's the SBW, it's a Stromberg Building Workshop. And as engineer, they are architects and engineers. And Stromberg Con Construction Workshop believes in sustainable construction technology at the core of the architectural design and engineering phase. They work with SketchUp as a central model, as a central model throughout the project. They do everything from design via tender documentation to delivering detailed model, which they in, then use throughout the projects in all phases. And they actually do 80 to 90% of the project is created and modeled in SketchUp. And this is an example of a residential project that their engineering team has worked on. And in addition to the sustainable design, this climate smart house are not connected to the district heating system, thanks to solar cells and battery storage. And it managed to produce all their energy that is consumed for both heating and electricity use themselves. The next example from SBW, this is where they actually done both architecture and engineering for this project. This is Villas, located right out, out of Stockholm in Sweden. And Stonebrew Building Workshop use sustainable sequen sequenced uh, forest products in their built environment using their buildings as carbon sinks. So that is the more they built, the more CO2 they actually store. The next project is by Perkins Eastman, and Harry will take you through that. Thanks, Tuva. Yeah, uh, I want to talk about this because I, you know, Perkins Eastman is a huge firm that does many beautiful and sustainable buildings, but this one actually spoke to me for many reasons, not just because it's a school, but because it had some beautiful outcomes that I want to share with you guys. So they designed a net positive school, right? And that means it's a school that generates more energy than it consumes. So right off the bat, it's a fantastic project energy-wise and emissions-wise. But I want to show you that it's that sustainability is not just that, right? I mean, there are parts of sustainability that benefit both the occupants and society as a whole. So I want to focus on daylighting for a bit. And yeah, also feast your eyes on the beauty of those pictures. That is a fantastic school to be in. So... Even if you were to just optimize for daylight, and what I mean is by you design so that you get the right amount of daylight that uh, increases all the good outcomes you want inside the class. And what do I mean by that, right? So studies show that schools with access to daylight improve a whole bunch of things like test performance, you know, by 26%, huge number, reading speed, you know, student learning, it reduces absenteeism, so kids come to school more often, and then they also get more sleep because uh, of the effects of daylight on their circadian rhythm, right? So all of these are fantastic effects to have on children purely by optimizing the design for the amount of daylight they get in there. And how did they do that, right? How does one optimize for daylight or anything for that matter? You iterate. So what you do is you take an idea and then you test it and then you change that idea and you test it some more. And that's what they've done here. So for example, what they did here was they had a top light, right? And then they simulated it, which means they analyzed it, you know, using uh, software to find out how much light that classroom got. Then they turned it around and they analyzed it again. And as they made changes, like cutting a hole in the slab, and all of those things, they found that they could actually, without changing the shape of the building too much, 
gen, uh, bring in a lot of outside light into the class. So this is an excellent example of optimization, how it is done. And this is what we expect that designers will do for their buildings, for other things that they could optimize for daylight, for energy, for emissions, for water, for waste, all of those different things. So this is, an, this is very beautifully done and I wanted to show you guys this. And with this, I'm gonna hand it back to Tuva who's gonna to talk to you about all this stuff. Oh, I think that's, actually, I think I, that's you. You are all right. Care. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I was actually excited about this. So yeah, what does SketchUp make that actually helps architects and designers do the kind of work that I showed you? Right. So we make a couple of things. We make something called pre-design, and what pre-design does is it enables designers to understand the climatic conditions on their site. We're going to look at it for a, you know in a few seconds. We also make Sapphira, which is for designers to look at what their actual, how their actual designs uh, perform for energy and daylight and things. So let's take a look. So pre-design, right? What pre-design does is it tells you about the climatic conditions on site, not just how they are, but also narrows those conditions down to the conditions that matter to your design and the conditions that don't. So it's quick climatic insight to begin with. And it'll also give you hints on how the design can respond to those condition, to those climatic conditions, right? So do you need shading? Can you have natural ventilation? Do you need to insulate? You know, do you, can you have more windows, less windows? It'll tell you all of that, right? Here's an example of, can I have more windows? What happens if I have more windows? Does it get too hot, too cold? So this will answer all these questions for you before you put pencil to paper. The idea is that you get a deeper understanding of the options that are available to you before you start designing the actual building. It will also let you know what kinds of shading types work on your windows, since you know how much, how much, how many, how many, how much windows you can have, right? And we've also gamified it so that options that reduce your energy the most and keep you the most comfortable will have more stars. Ones that don't really make a change or make things worse will have zero stars or fewer stars. Same thing for lighting from the from horizontal surfaces, right? Roof lights and skylights, which ones are good, which ones are bad. You'll get all that information from pre-design. The other thing it does is it will tell you what you need to do to keep outside spaces comfortable. So this is super fascinating. Could be anything from a balcony to a courtyard to an outdoor market. But the idea is in that climate and location, uh, what do you need to do to keep that outside space comfortable and use it more? So pre-design will tell you all that. It will tell you, well, do you need to shade it if it's a very hot and sunny climate? Do you need to provide wind breaks if it's a cold and windy climate and just preventing the wind would keep people much warmer? Do you need to have a fan? Does it get dark early? So do you need, do you need to have light? It'll, it'll calculate all that and let you know what, what you need to do to keep the outside space usable for longer during the year. And once you know all of this, you can start designing your building. And so once you've designed your own building, you've started designing, you have geometry, you have massings, you have things like that. That's when Sephira will jump in and analyze your actual building, the actual windows you've put in, your actual design in the context, uh, keeping surrounding things in mind and everything and tell you how your building is performing for both daylight, as we see here, right? It's telling you what the light levels are on the floor in your actual design, as well as energy and emissions. So the idea is that very early, you, you have the ability to, for example, compare massings, you know, and when you're early, when you're in the early stage of design, you're trying to answer some big questions. It's, what kind of massings can I have? How should I orient my building? You know, by which I mean, which way should the building face to use less energy? Uh, what about self-shading? Can parts of my building shade other parts of my building? Things like that. So if you could in the early stage, you know, try four different building massing shapes and compare them and see which one uses the least amount of energy, you know, needs the least amount of heating and cooling, uh, that will help you generate or design a building that becomes very, efficient to operate later on. And there's also a second part to SketchUp when after you've uh, 
optimized your form, you can go in and really dig deep and optimize a whole bunch of other things, right? So you can optimize on a room by room basis. You can try different amounts of glazing and different kinds of building assemblies and try natural ventilation, you know, and try different kinds of shading and see what happens if they all work together. Uh, so by the end of this process, you have designed a building that by sheer design uses the least amount of energy, right? And after that, it's on to systems and system optimizations, but this is the key, designing a very low energy building and uh, knowing that you're designing a low energy building at the concept stage. With that, I wanna hand it over to Tuva who will talk to you about some fantastic projects that you know, students have done. Yes, and thank you so much, Her. This is so great to have both Safari and Free Design and I hope your students will use this or if you haven't, please do. And of course, we do have fantastic students that have learned SketchUp during their university time. And we want to show you two uh, students, two fantastic students, that is like a student ambassador for us. This is the first one. His name is Jack Denberg. And he actually he went from student to staffed architect and won our student competition 2016 he modeled a train station uh, in, in SketchUp. And we will share in the chat this link with you so you can actually read the whole piece yourself. The next student uh, on the next slide is Lydia Proikina. She's a master graduate student that explores adoptable building and mass timber construction. Her passion for sustainability and innovate building practices led her to this work. And I met her in person last year in December in Stockholm at the KTH, the Royal Institute of Stockholm. And we will, we will of course, share her, um, share her article as, as well on the blog page. So feel free, go in, read them and enjoy because it's a great, two, two great pieces of article. And we actually have a special release to do today that was not on the agenda that we shared at the beginning. This is something that we have been worked on for a long time and you guys will have this peak and if we go to the next slide with a drum kind of thing. This is SketchUp Studio. This is what it's, it's include right now and we will tell you exclusively at from today, it's actually also includes Scan Essential. That's now a part of the student license. So you are the first to know that this is out, up and running and we hope that you wanna try it and see the great features that it comes with this add-on. And next slide. So what is Trimble Scan Essential for SketchUp? What will it do for you? Um, it's actually, it provides SketchUp to ability to import, view, and model from Pwned Clyde data into SketchUp. It will make it, uh, next, oh no, it's fine. Uh, it will make it easy to use, convert scan data, quality assurance, and visualization. And this is two options you can go. It's the Trimble 3D scanner, that using lasers to uh, recreate their surroundings, just like a movie, I would say. And then you have actually an iPad where you use it, you scan the room, and then you use the, uh, the image you will get when you scan. And on the last slide, um, um, we want you to, to try this. You can actually model directly on the point Clyde and lock on to either the scan data or your SketchUp element to ensure the accuracy. But this, this was just a sneak preview and we will get back to you in the future with more information about this great thing, the scan essential included in SketchUp. Thank you so much for attending this webinar and we hope that we have inspired you to start creating sustainable projects in SketchUp. Thank you so much.
And of course, we do have questions. I guess, Charles, that we have some of them have popped in during our presentation. Uh, yes. So um, I would just like to remind everybody who's watching this currently uh, to submit your questions. If you are using Zoom, you can ask your questions in the Q&A section. Um, and if you're streaming from another platform, just uh, leave it in the chat. Um, and then just as a friendly reminder as well that uh, we may not be able to get to all of your questions today. Um, and th there's always that chance of having questions after the webinar. So, and if that's the case, just reach out to us over social media via DM and we'll do our best to answer those for you. Um, so let me jump in real quick and see. Um, we've got a couple questions that um, one for sure that we're good to go on. Um, this is from um, Anna Maria in Zoom, and Anna Maria asks, where can we find more information on the 3D scanner? You want to take that, oh, Harry, or? Sure, I'll do it. So, so uh, Trimble makes some fantastic 3D scanners, and you can find information about 3D scanners uh, on the Trimble website. A uh, lot of, so I know for a fact that the iPad Pro, right? And the iPhone 14 Pro, Pro Max, all of those, they have LiDAR scanners in them. So you can actually use them to also do your scans like we saw my colleague do in that little GIF. So those are where you can start. Uh, but yeah, I mean, scanning is a vast field, so go for it. And as well, we will do some material from the educational team as well for the future. This is just brand new. You are just having the sneak peek and it will, we will get back to you as well. All right. This is a question from PLM on, on LinkedIn. Do I need to be an architect to be a sustainability designer? I would say no. I think you can be several educators. I mean, it, it depends on where you come from, um, your work experience. Um, I, I, I would say that several education ed, educations for like building engineers have that as well, um, or environmental engineers. Uh, but yeah, you can be an architect as well. Or Harry, awesome. do you have anything there? Oh, sure. I, I'd like to add that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, it's an approach, right? You, yeah. Sustainability is an approach. So you can apply it to pretty much any career. We talk a lot about uh, buildings because that's the space that we're in. But any, any approach that reduces waste, that consumes very little and is efficient in what it consumes, you know, will, cons will, be, will, will construe a sustainable. So yeah, you can use, use the approach anywhere. You don't need to be an architect to do that. You can be a fabricator. You can be, like Harris said, if you have the passion for it, go for it. Mm -hmm. All right. We've got a question from Dan on YouTube. Dan asks, after design and construction uh, during occupancy and operation, how might what we as designers ensure that buildings operate consistently at the performance levels they've been designed to achieve? And that's a lot. Ooh. Let me know if you need me to reread that. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. It's, that's a very, it's a tough thing that people struggle with, right? Because uh, the, so when, when designers design very efficient buildings, they make assumptions about how people are going to use them, right? But people never stick to the assumptions that designers make, right? So the idea is that if you can, stay very close to the operational assumptions you made while you design the building, then the building will probably perform uh, to the predictions that you made. It also means that the weather has to be the same that you predicted and things like that, right? So what you'll find is that you can design a very efficient building and the building will perform efficiently, but it may not perform exactly the way that you designed it to which is not a bad thing because buildings are flexible, right? 
So what happens over time is as you understand how the building actually operates once it's been built, you can make operational changes to it. You can change set points. You can make behavioral changes like, hey, you know, maybe everybody can uh, come in a little late during the winter days so that we don't have to heat up that much, you know. So all kinds of things are possible. But the idea is that your building will never perform exactly the way you designed it, but it'll still be the most efficient version of itself if you have designed it efficiently. I hope that helps. All right. So um, I got another question from YouTube. This is uh, Johnny on YouTube um, asking about the, the, the quality and I'm guessing like the consistency of scanning via an iPhone. Uh, will the quality be good when scanning with an iPhone or are there more advanced technologies uh, that would make it notice noticeably better? Um, yeah, I mean, the Trimble scanner that we showed you there is the upper end of things, right? It is, it, it's, it shoots lasers at things and it'll capture, uh, you, its surroundings at a, you know, sub three inch accuracy at minimum. So that's super, super duper accurate. Uh, the iPad and iPhones, I would say are for more small interior spaces or to capture, products and things but there's a there's a vast there, there's a lot of uh, other equipment that is available that ranges in between these two depending on the use case you want awesome um i've got a question from muhammad uh on linkedin uh, muhammad is wondering if this webinar will be available um after after this and i'm going to answer that and that is the answer is yes so this will be on demand on the social media platforms and we will work to send this out to everybody as well after the fact um so that's exciting so this is going to be available for you to re-watch and go through um and then let's see um i've got a couple more questions um if anybody else, else has any additional questions, please uh, send them in the chats. Um, this one here comes from Marie um, on Zoom. How could the scanner help from a structural perspective? Uh, Marie cares about sustainability but their field uh, is structural engineering and they're not sure how um, it could play a role in, in their job. I think it could play several roles, but one of the most important thing with a scanner is you can actually, if you have old buildings, you have broken buildings, you want to rebuild, you want to re-engineer, you can see what the building looks like right now. Sometimes you don't have the, the blueprints uh, for the building, and you need to have um, you need to you need to have the measurements. So I would say that's one thing how you can use it. It might not just be sustainable in that case, but you can optimize the space you have, because that also something we did not mention it in the webinar. But we cannot just build buildings for fifty years. We need to build buildings for hundred or even more. But we also need to have in the early stage already in there that this building need, maybe will take another shape in 20, 30 years, and to have a scanner, the because you don't. Know, an owner can rebuild and they can redo. And if, if you have the scanner op option, you can actually go in there and you can you can do a remodel of the house. So that's just one example. But yeah, I, I see the question. Um, I would just use it for that. Maybe Harry can add something if you have something on your lips. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, one other good use, especially with structures, is that scanning, repeated scanning, uh, will let you know whether you're building accurately to your design, right? Because errors are hard to fix once you make them, especially if you're doing structural things like pouring concrete over reinforcement, right? Once you've poured the concrete, then things get very hard to fix. So a good example is if you scan your rebar, you know, and then you compare that to your model and see if everything's where it should be before you pour the concrete, you'll save a lot of 
material heartache rework waste all of that uh, that you would not have if you hadn't caught errors then so i'd add that scanning for structural design and construction is useful in reducing waste during construction stage and also just add the scanning to the whole chain the whole work process you can scan to beam or beam to scan that's something that that comes and it's been asked for to be able to use those point clients inside of uh, of of SketchUp, for example, you can have them in several tools. And I think it's very important to have the scan because it will help you so much. And just like Harris said, if you do them in, in, in certain timelines, you can actually see what's happened and, you, and you, can, you can project if there's something actually going wrong. Awesome. Uh, all right. I see one more question. Actually, um, I think we are actually out of time. So we'll do our best to to reach out to everybody um, after this webinar. If we haven't answered your question, like I said, just message us on social media. We'll do our best to um, answer your questions there if we didn't get to it. Um, I'll also be jumping in the, the chat as well um, on social media for each of these uh, streams to answer any questions. Um, on every platform, including Zoom, I did submit the the articles that we were talking about. So those are, are in the chat for you. Give those a read. Get some more uh, inspiration. Um, but uh, once again, this will be available for you on demand if you missed anything Um um, previous uh, to this, uh, to where you're at in the live stream right now, that's going to be available for you. So make sure to watch it. We'll hopefully do some more live streams in the future. I think we have another one from our uh, our video team tomorrow, where you can learn some tutorials on how to build things and how they go through their design process. That's going to be available for you tomorrow. But everyone, thank you so much for uh, for coming along. Uh, uh, Tova, Hari, thank you so much for leading this discussion. Um, and to everyone here, everyone, everyone, we thank you so much for, for joining us on this conversation. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And let us know, we, should we do more of these? Because this was a lot of fun and we want to... Um, see if this is something that you'd be interested in in the future. So uh, let us know. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, so much everyone. for listening. All right. Bye, everyone.